Hi. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Gambhir. Can you turn your uh, um, video on? Uh, Dr. Sanjay Gambhir is uh, somebody we have known, I think, for since the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, 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 I'll go back to that era at SDPGI. He is uh, the chief of nuclear medicine now at uh, SGPGI in uh, Lucknow and is a very eminent um, figure in nuclear medicine circles. So uh, I think um, a detailed introduction will probably eat into his time and uh, Gambhir will be much happier covering the topic that we have because after having done axial and ultrasound and uh, contrast enhanced CT MRI, what exactly is the nuclear medicine um, option offering to the clinician is something probably there can be few people better uh, fitted to answer this question than Dr. Gambhir. So Gambhir, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. I have heard a lot about the anatomical thing and that's the predominant imaging thing for all space occupying lesion. So as far as uh, nuclear medicine is considered, I was talk, asked to talk about scintigraphy and PET. So scintigraphy consists of basically when we said scintigraphy, we mean technetium, our standard gamma camera imaging with technetium agents. So there was a time when um, uh, the, 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 is there echo again? Okay. So when there was um, this liver standard liver scanning with sulfur colloid was uh, used for uh, the for the liver imaging for the uh, space occupying lesion and then the rbc imaging was uh, used for the uh, focal nodular hyperplasia and liver hemangioma are the slides moving can you mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. We can see okay. the arrow. So, yeah. So, uh, these were the uh, some agents, sulfur colloid and RBCs, and macro aggregates for shunts and for accessory spleen. Also, the heat damaged RBC. They are still talked about occasionally. So, these are the four standard scintigraphic agents for various indications, as like you said, for the hemangioma and uh, for uh, the any space occupying lesion. So uh, the sulfur colloid basically goes to all the uh, parts, the spleen, the liver, the bone marrow, and you know, all the reticular endothelial system. So the colloid was earlier used, it shows all the reticular endothelial system and thus gives a shadow of the dark shadow of where it is taken in the liver spleen and you can see the bone marrow. That means all the function things are working, working well, the reticular endothelium is working nicely. And in this background, if there was a SOL, that came up as a coin negative shadow in this liver. So in the era when the ultrasound was not there or was ju uh, just coming in, you know, when I was at in mass DRDO, that was the only ultrasound in whole of Delhi. So at that time, if ultrasound was busy, all more than half the, of the SOLs would land in nuclear medicine to show that there is a SOL, not to characterize further, yes, there is a SOL and that's where when we all use sulfur colloid to look for a negative shadow in a dark uh, colloid background. And colloid just to update also give you function that the liver is functioning well. If the uptake of liver is more than spleen and marrow is seen, that means all the parenchyma, the, the Kupfer cells the reticular endothelium. So it gave you about the function of the liver and if there is any negative shadow in the liver, that means some SOL was there. That's all we could do, but still at that time, this was very popular. Now this is no longer required in the era of ultrasound, CT scans and all. So just for recapitulation. And then there came the RBC scan, which was earlier done, suspicion of liver hemangioma. So these uh, characteristics of uh, hemangioma, which are now talked about in ultrasound and CT, the perfusion phase and the um, arterial phase and the later washout phase, that was the standard thing which started in nuclear medicine. And that's how we detected hemangiomas. We injected labeled RBCs and the it would go in the hemangioma, stay there, whereas the liver background would 
wash up. So it would give a positive coin shape, lesion, single or more than one. So very uh, characteristic of the uh, uh, the the uh, features of hemangioma. And because hemangioma was part of the group also, whether it is benign lesion or malignant, so hemangioma would rule out malignancy indirectly. So the these are histological thing and I would skip because a lot has been discussed and so what I would do, so in ultrasound hyperechoic mass, no Doppler sign, flow, slow flow in the liver. And that's when, you know, uh, is if you compare with the, uh, the, the nuclear one, I would straight come to it. The gradual centripetal enhancement of the portal venous phase and the peripheral nodal enhancement in the arterial phase, as was just discussed, even in the MRI. So that was a uh, starting point of it, even in the technetium labeled RBC, which was used as a contrast to enhance this image in the early phase and in the uh, mid phase and the late phase. And they would, they showed up very nicely uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, our image. I'm trying to skip to the image because all this has been uh, talked already. So, uh, if you see that uh, the the features the below the two uh, images are the perfusion phase on the labeled RBCs. So what you see as a big lesion in the in the liver that in the planar uh, nuclear perfusion phase you can see all the vessels and the heart you can see in the upper half in the chest. So the lower part of the liver is enhancing with the labeled technetium labeled RBCs and the upper part of the liver is not enhanced. So the labeled RBCs would, they show that they are pulling in this lesion, which was they shown in, in this case in CT or if seen on ultrasound. So, uh, and this enhancing of the liver and then retention. So this is the perfusion the border two images and then it would sort of enhance the rest of the liver would come up and then the that part slowly would uh, wash out so in this uh, studies what was shown at that the sensitivity is still very high 97% specificity 83% accuracy is very high and there was only uh, perfusion slight change in the perfusion and blood full phase to uh, dis discriminate that what type of hemangioma it is. So this is a, just I have put it to show this is a where the hemangioma perfusion and uh, various phases started and this is a still a very good technique. So if there is any uh, controversy, confusion or equivocal thing or CT or MR, then this can be still be resorted to, though the referrals are now very less, but the technique is very stable and sound. So the sulfur colloid is off, simple as well. And the uh, hemangioma thing is still very much based on very nice principles, which were later adopted to uh, better anatomical imaging uh, techniques like CT and MR. So basically this uh, phases came from here and this technique still is valid and holds good. So that is the point to highlight it. So in general, 90% sensitivity, the larger the lesion, the better the accuracy. And then came the spec, the single photon emission. So we can get the sections of the liver like CT. Now we have spec CT. So you, if you add spec CT to the same planar imaging, the sensitivity goes very much high, more than 90%. And the so size and so negative ones we have difficulty is if it is adjacent to a vascular structure like heart and hilum or great vessels or some fibrosis is there. So you can see the false positivity is, you know, just 5% and there are more of uh, false negative. So here is the list, you know, the other things where there can be uh, overlap, but not so much are the other kind of uh, masses generally in the liver where uh, there can be uh, some overlap. So SPECT improves the sensitivity, better localizes which 
uh, lobe of the liver, which per segment of the liver the lesion is, and whether it is separated from the. So in this case, the upper part, the below the dome of the uh, diaphragm, you can see this uh, nice mass. And in the transfer section, in the spect images, you can see this uh, coming, this lesion, and uh, this is the spleen, the dark one, and there is a. Uh, this is the perfusion phase on the spect one where it is very faintly seen and as we go along uh, this would uh, further enhance the yeah so this is uh, again in the spect images you can see very nicely bright and shine this is large one and it is superimposed on the CT of the SPECT CT, so you can see which segment it is. So these are examples of, uh, you know, uh, various studies where the uh, percentage of detectable lesion was there. So these studies were being done till 2004-05 and occasionally patients are still referred to us. Another case, nicely seen lesion in the, near the hilum in CT, this was hyperintense, hyperdense and then it enhanced in the and liver washed out. You can see liver become faint and this lesion sh uh, shines nicely and uh, you can uh, very well. So this is RBC technique. So these two techniques I wanted to highlight to recapitulate the sulfur collide and the um, hemangioma RB RBC labeled spec which is very much uh, valid though uh, more of the referral because of good anatomical delineation is going to uh, the MRI or the CT part. So uh, I will now come to the FDG. The other this is the PET. So the task was scintigraphy at the PET. So scintigraphy is just these two techniques which are little bit uh, in vogue today. Uh, and the other rest of the things have gone to the PET. And PET, as you know, uh, is retained in the cells in the normal liver cells. And if you have SOL in the liver depending on the kind of cells. So FDG PET per se is not for detection of SOL. It is to characterize in case like you have done such extensive studies on the CT and uh, MR and if still there is a query and you are still not going in, not sure of putting in the needle to get your sample. So in that scenario, FDG helps to characterize that mass, what kind of mass it is. Basically, it is a glucose uh, uh, substrate which is, up, uh, you know, upregulated in mel more in malignant masses, less in inflammatory masses, but goes both across the malignant to inflammatory masses. So there are false positive also. So in this case, the retention, the reasons of retention is there. Apart from the glucose up regulation, the other important thing is the turnover is based on the proliferation of the cells which are in that mass. So there can be same histological character to the mass, but two masses are not different because cells would be proliferating different. What it means is if there is a poorly differentiating mass, poorly differentiated uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, so in that case, the uptake of FDG would be quite high. So SUV, what we get the cutoff value, standard uh, uptake values, they would be 7 or 8 and very clearly visible to blind eyes. So if it is moderately differentiated or well differentiated, the uptake of FDG would be much lesser. So there is a variation across the same lesion. So if a SOL is coming and you are trying to make out what it is, it is malignant or not. This is one way to go, realizing that the uptake would be still be variable be on the inherent and stage of that SOL. Is it the cell div dividing very fast, slow? What is the size of the lesion? And But grossly, the principle is that if there is more FD uptake, the probability of it being malignant goes up. Now, the uptake also indicates the prognosis too. If the uptake is high, that means it's poorly differentiated. 
so it is be little difficult to tackle and if you are trying to uh, be aggressive that might not be the way because it's unlikely to respond or respond poorly to the treatment you are planning even chemo or uh, surgical or what so the recurrences will be more so the in hepatocellular carcinoma uh, hcc sensitivity detection is 50 to 70 percent because of this varied uptake across the same lesion whether it is poorly differentiated or intermediate differentiated or very well differentiated so poorly differentiated i have already told you will have high suv and the other thing is good to give you simultaneously information about the extra hepatic extension metastasis or you want to follow up that disease after treatment intervention so when you are doing fdg in 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 for a characterizing a lesion in the liver that will give you indication how aggressive the mass is likely to be with good probability and then it gives you a template for follow up of your patient as to did it simultaneously have the lymph nodes too or the you the, the therapy you gave whether the uptake goes low later that mean there is a response to therapy so it's a comprehensive in the sense to characterize uh, the behavior of the tissue and what it is so uh, and of course uh, the here is an example of hepatocellular carcinoma uh, here in the uh, lobe where the pointer is and simultaneously there are two lymph nodes so this clearly uh, tells you that uh, they, it is a metastatic lesion so you can uh, you know fuse the image and uh, decide on the further course of uh, the so it has staged the disease for you it has told you it is a malignant disease and if of course histopathological diagnosis is required one goes in and uh, still puts the uh, needle there are other newer agents of 11 carbon which we make with the cyclotron so at times ftg does not go so you shift to the amino acid labeling the amino acid we have methionine and we have uh, acetate and we have choline now this is 20 minute half life i just wanted to point out that if you have still doubt then you can shift to amino acid pet agents which are still giving you another step forward that this lesion is having very aggressive turnover of uh, metabolism if not glucose the amino acid uptake is very sharp and high now i mentioned this because the 11 carbon is 20 minutes half life it can be done where only cyclotron is there like we do at sgpj but now the vendors are giving the f18 version of these agents also so like you buy your fdg you can buy the uh, not 11 carbon but f18 choline from a vendor and put it to see that the your lesion has a amino acid turnover so it it is a further one step further backup of fdg if fdg is equivocal you can shift to the amino acid with the same aim as to characterize these into malignant and the non malignant variety so basically we have seen various uh, classification for, uh, in earlier lecture ultrasound this so malignant and benign and this so this list is long and very characteristic features of hepatocellular adenoma were just told or angioma so basically in this as i put in red at the end, majority of primary and secondary malignant lesion show high update though the variation is large still they are to large extent will give you a very strong indication and apart from that the benign one the lymphomas or angiomyo lymphoma focal nodular hyperplasia and in our country the infections and inflammation including the autoimmune uh, processes they will show patchy uptake in the fdg pet if you happen to do it or is it incidentally detected while pet was being done for some other cause then you have to chase that lesion as to what it is it is not matching with the primary finding or the primary disease you were following up the patient for so uh, the uptakes 
and inflammation we do see it in tuberculosis in our country tuberculosis is quite common we see it in lymphoma we see in children any immune depressed so there are simultaneously benign uh, infiltrations or inflammatory masses in the liver which appear as as well but they are inflammatory so the the more aggressive uptake is in the malignant lesion but at times this inflammatory lesion do overlap with this malignant so one has to be careful at time these two lesions appear together there is a metastasis from colon and then there is a uh, uh, tubercular lesion also we have seen that so there the overlap is there so one would still have to put a needle there to differentiate between these two things so there are benign tumors with take fdg and there are uh, malignant one with uh, much force on the malignant side so the uptake as i earlier said there are glut receptors yeah, another another maybe 2 minutes right so we forget about the mechanism so the cellular turnover and how the uptake mechanism is regulated in each cancer type leads to the increase uptake and that tells us about the characteristic of the tissue so in summarize you know with the advent of new techniques sulfur colloid is no longer in vogue and for liver as well and hemangiomas can be done with good sensitivity and specificity with uh, technetium labeled rbcs fdg is for characterizing the as you know as well as of the liver extrahepatic disease staging recurrence follow up and um, equivocal uh, cases from mri falling over and guiding biopsy we at times get call from radiology group where their announcement in the standard triple phase in ct or mri is not there but they are suspecting on ultrasound did show some change in uh, you know uh, ultrasound signal so they feel so this happens in the infiltrative kind of mass lymphoma breast secondaries and some other diseases and even in tuberculosis also so there is a plate like or tree like extension of the cell so they are not exactly a mass so their signals are different so you need to do a biopsy so at time fdg does uptake shows uptake in such kind of mass yes there is a mass in the liver so you can target your right area where to do your biopsy from and of course if you are doing in contacts with the carcinoid and other neuroendocrine origin the gallium octreotide and dotatide is support to show that the mass in the liver is uh, from uh, these malignancy and uh, The, you can take help uh, to back up the standard fdg may be low in these thing whereas the octreotide or dota take may be quite high so that's what from me thank you very much thank you uh, we have to close at 9 so concluding comments from dr saraswat and dr mehta uh well i think uh, we have had a very elaborate presentation by each of the uh pre- the imaging presenters all three of them and a lot of information has been given i think uh, uh time for question answer is crucial for a good uh, session and i we are probably been starved of questions in this session i think uh, gambhir a quick question for you would be uh, you mentioned suv suv max values uh, and we know that uh, severe inflammation versus neoplasia the two pathologies we are thinking so uh, is there some kind of an suv max cut off that can help to differentiate between what is probably inflammatory versus neoplastic there are no this very frequently asked question so uh, there are no official cut offs or guideline which call for there are gross experience based that usually above 6 is more likely to be malignant and below that as you come uh, below that they are unlikely to be but that's not the rule of the thumb right so th- that's what we say oh, so you have to correlate with your oh, other kind of clinical backups or other biomarkers which are indicating whether it is inflammatory or that so all with that stage we can say there is a lesion and it can be both okay thank you so i i think um, uh, maybe professor mehta can uh, put in uh, his i mean makes his comments um, and uh, Come back, uh, complete the session. Thank you.
I would like to congratulate all the four speakers. They have done a fantastic job. Tried to cover a very vast and a comprehensive uh, presentation and on a topic in a very short span of time. But as already said, it it is always better to have a short uh, time period left for question and answers because uh, the students who are uh, attending this session may have some queries. Unfortunately, we don't have any questions coming up on the chat. but that would have made it a little more uh, livelier but nevertheless i think all of you have done a fantastic job in trying to cover a very vast topic so thank you it was a fantastic uh, master class anand you are there you want to conclude and announce uh, about gst is anand there because he had to leave in between actually for a uh, emergency so uh, if he is not there then i would like to thank um, all the four speakers and dr namesh and dr saraswat so we will continue with the master class tomorrow uh, 7 to 9 again and uh, cover the rest of the things thank you sir um, as yes. as is our tradition we start at 7 and close at 9 so good night everyone thank you thank you very thank much thank you okay, good, good night, night. Bye. Bye. enjoyed that thank you yeah.